In this video, I'll show you how to make a book cover for any book and make it look a little more expensive with a leather cover. This can be used to cover an original book cover, like school books, or if for the book binders out there, if you want a Coptic stitch covered, you can use this to cover it. Or maybe you want to make multiples and switch out the covers on your favorite book. For my cover, I used vinyl, which looks like leather. Vinyl is a lot less expensive than leather, and it can be easier to find in larger sheets. This method also works with different materials like fabric or anything else that you think would make a good durable outside cover. And as always, I will include a full list of the supplies I used in the video description below, and let's get started. I'm using this long piece of vinyl that I got from my local fabric store, and I did have to iron it because it was wrinkly. If you need to do the same, check out this video right here and it will show you how to do that. The book that I'm covering is this Coptic stitch book that I made, and it's actually from my very first video on YouTube, and you can check that out right here. It's a full tutorial of how to make this same book. You want to start on a piece of material that is wider than what your book is when it's fully open. You'll need enough width to make flaps on the front and back cover and a little extra fabric on the top and bottom so that you have room for stitching. To measure the height of the book cover, you'll need to add five millimeters to the top and bottom of whatever the height is of your book. Every book will be different. I took the measurement of mine and I marked it on my material. Vinyl or leather usually comes in odd shapes and this is a really uneven shape. So I want it even for an even book cover. So I'm using a drafting triangle to mark out the height of my book cover and drawing that straight across the entire piece. Then I'm going to trim off the excess uneven parts. Just a tip, you might find it easier to trim with a rotary blade on this type of material. Craft knives can leave snags and this just really makes a smooth cut. Now I have an even piece to work with, so the height of the cover is taken care of. And now I'm going to make the flaps for the front and back cover. The width of the flap is really up to you, whether you want it closer to the spine of your book or further away. I'm going to make mine a little closer to the inside of the book, then I'm going to measure that width so I can repeat the same thing on the other flap so that they're equal. The measurement for mine was about 7 inches. For the stitching process later on, I'm going to put the flap in and put the book on top of it to hold it in place, and then mark where it ends so that I know where the flap should be. Now do the exact same process on the other side. So on the other side, I'm going to mark where the flap should end, which is about seven inches because that's what I measured on the other side. So I'm trimming the excess off to cut it to that. Now I have even flaps on both sides and I'm just going to fold that over and mark where it should end so that I know where it should be in the stitching process. Make a mark on the bottom and the top of the cover. Now for the stitching process. Fold the flaps over on the marks you made so that it stays in place and I found it easier to use tape so it doesn't move while I'm sewing. Doing this on the other side, lining it up to the marks and taping it in place. For the stitching, I'm just using regular craft thread and a curved needle. You can also use a straight one, I just find this one a little easier to work with. With the needle single threaded, I'm going to sew into the first corner and leave a little thread on the end so that I can tie a knot. Then just start looping stitches just like this from top to bottom and continue stitching both of the sides together, making the holes close to the edge. Mine are about three to four millimeters away. And the amount of space between the stitches is really up to you. The style or method of stitching is also up to you. I'm just using this basic stitch, which I find easy. If you prefer not to sew, you can also try a vinyl or leather glue to glue all the edges together. Continue stitching all the way to the end, and once you get there, tie a knot onto the final stitch, tuck the needle into the flap, and you can pull it to the inside so that the end of the thread isn't showing on the outside. Cut the excess off, and you can also do the same to the beginning of the thread. You can tuck that in and trim off any excess. I'm just going to put the tape back on because I had to remove it to get inside the flap, and then continue the exact same process on all the other sides. After all the stitching is done, you now have this cover, which has a pocket on each side, and after your ends are all tucked in and cut off to the way you want them, 
It's now ready to slip onto your book. The deeper the pocket you make, like mine, it might take a little more time to work it onto the book cover. But once you fit it snug onto the cover, now it can look like it's a part of your book and it's protecting it and making it look just a little more fancy with the leather cover. I tried the same method on this big textbook with green vinyl and magenta stitching. You can try different color combinations of material, fabric, and the color of stitching. You can have fun customizing this while at the same time making a durable outside cover for your book. I hope you found this video helpful and for more book related projects, check out this playlist right here. There's a lot of tutorials in there. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and to watch more videos, go to my channel at youtube.com slash DIY. For another leather book project, check out this recipe book on the left. To turn a composition notebook into a hardcover, watch the video on the right. For more updates and inspiration, follow me at my social links along the bottom and feel free to leave video requests in the comments. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!